training and she is running for selectman in Willimantic. Rosita, you've been a business person for a very long period of time. Here 22 town. years. 22 years, oh my goodness. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here in town, where you are, and how long you've been here? I understand you've been, I don't understand, I know you're here on Main Street. Tell us a little bit about your business. Well, I'm a tax preparer and I teach taxes. You teach taxes? Yes, matter of fact, as far as teaching taxes, everybody assumes I am an accountant. I am not. I proudly say I am not. I happen to teach people in order for them to get their accountant degree. It's, it's a different. It's, it's different. The, the hoops are different. Well, anyways, I've been in business for 22 years here. I also own a little toy store next door. I am a landlord also in town on three buildings here in town. And your husband is uh, also on uh, the police force. He's a town employee, yes. Yes, he's, he's been on the police right. force now for 24 years. Okay. Well, uh, since you've been here on Main Street for a period of time, could you give us an idea, is your general impression on Main Street? Do you feel that this is a, is a good place to run your business? Uh, do you feel it's attractive? Uh, what would you have to say about Main Street in general? Physically attractive, uh, it needs help. Uh-huh. As far as the, the community, I like the community. If I didn't, I would not be committed to it. Um, we, we, we need help. But what's not helping is the, peop, the, um, the administration in town. That's one of the reasons why I want to run for, uh, I'm running for Board of Selectmen, because my philosophy is if you got a complaint, keep your big mouth shut unless you're willing to do something about it. Well, being that I'm 39 again and again and again, and I've been married 28 years, I, um, I'm at the empty nest, so, so I had time. you were one of those very young brides. <laughs> yes, yes, married 28 years. Oh, shucks, I think I started getting married my age. That's right, I said I was 39 again and again and again. Yes, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, oh, come on, I own um, buildings next door. I got a couple of um, my tenants' restaurants, so I have to deal with the um, health department, building department, um, any of the department in this town and you know what they don't like being held accountable and there's too much double standards going on and it's like something's wrong here there's a lot of corruption going on in the leadership in this town so we need a change in the leadership so I like to think my name begins with an R and I'm proud to say I am a Republican a good conservative old-fashioned Republican so the right Republican for the job is Rosita okay are there any specific things that you are concerned about. What would be uh, some of the things that you would like to tackle first as a selectman? Well, not necessarily first. I tend to be somebody who um, has a lot of things going on at the same time. But the most recent, my most recent complaint is all these big trucks that's going on down, downtown. I mean, even my buildings, the walls are cracking, my porcelain dolls are falling. I mean, it's just, I mean, how can anybody or even feel safe? Matter of fact, don't feel safe because of these big trucks. It's not necessary to have the big trucks. Before Frog Bridge was here, the trucks made their way from point A to point B without coming on Main Street. So why do we need to have them on Main Street now? Uh, incidentally, I, I'm just wondering if that's one of the reasons that Uber May, may have moved out. That was a very quaint little restaurant. A good know. homey type restaurant and you could uh, bring your lunch out on a little table outside. Something different to make this seem like a little quaint homey you know community town. You know everybody you know I don't know all the uh, reasons why people move out of town but I do know that one of them is uh, the taxes are ridiculous for the business people we have to pay more taxes than anybody else matter of fact the chairs that you and I are, are sitting in I have to pay taxes on that my little refrigerator in back my little printer things that we have at home that you don't have to pay taxes on but business people do and unfortunately people think that because you own a business you must have money yeah walk a mile in our shoes and where's that money going to the corrupt hands who's running this town and you know you know the people out there the common sense do the same thing same way you get the same results who wants the taxes to keep going up? You asked a moment ago, what's one of the main changes that I want to do? One of the main things is, is I have a heart for the widows in town. I have a lot of clients who are widows and widowers, and they are losing their homes. They're the ones that help establish this community, and they have to sell their homes because their Social Security checks, they can't afford their real estate taxes anymore. 
Well, yeah, the one thing I'd like to do myself is, uh, you know, without specifics on corruption, I, I think that basically maybe a corrupt mentality. In other words, uh, certainly different people get different benefits, and uh, this may not necessarily always be to the benefit. If I haven't mentioned it sooner, you mean the devil's stand is going on in town? I have proof of that, and we don't have time to talk about that, but when I get sure. in place, I'm you, it, it, will, it will come out. Time and place for everything. So in other words, the corruption you'd be talking about would be a double standard, where maybe one person is treated one way and another person is treated Most definitely. Way. Most definitely. Yeah. No, nothing anybody's going to be thrown in jail for at this point that I know of, but uh, certainly, who knows, but I don't think at this point in time. And a lot of people assume about. because I'm a police officer's wife that I have different benefits. Are you kidding? I am the least protected in this town because I am a police officer's wife. And people don't understand that. That's, um, that's another area. And nothing against my husband because anybody who knows my husband and my husband has to, had to had deal with them, arrested them, so forth, so forth. That he is a righteous man, he's a man of integrity, and he's doing his, his job, but he, he knows his stuff, the other police officers do, do not. And they don't have a backbone to stand up for what is right, because they're afraid that if they stand up for what's right, uh, people say, oh, you're just sticking up for her because she's a cop's wife. I hear. Now, let me ask you a question. One of those issues is I'm a, um, a landlord. Yeah. I alluded to that earlier. I'm a landlord. And I have proof from the court system that the Wilmington Police Department don't know, don't have the knowledge as far as to deal with landlord tenant issues. And that discourages people from investing in town. And everybody invests their money in different places. I personally, here's some free tax advice, folks, some Rosita's advice. I personally invest in buildings. And unfortunately, it happens to be in a town where the um, administration in town don't know the laws of the state of Connecticut when it comes to tenant landlords issues and that's one of the things that I aim to change. Now, the fewer people that are willing to invest in real estate and apartments in town obviously this means there'll be fewer uh, affordable rents which are available and that means even the people who are renting up I probably say I am the lowest legal price charge for tax returns and charging for rent if you know how to handle your money and as far as you know all, all, what kind of money we have anybody can go down to the town hall and find out how much income my husband makes and I only bring in income 10 weeks out of the year I just happen to know how to handle the finances now you've been here as I say for a period of time on Main Street have you seen any major changes in terms of the number of businesses on Main Street and the, the type of businesses on Main Street you mean people come for a really short time and they well, leave? Well, you know, you've certainly had a lot of situations that Massives is moving out. Oh my goodness, uh, yeah. there's not a week that goes by three or four times a week that I say, oh my goodness, I can't believe that Benny's is closed. I miss Benny's. Any store that has closed, my conscience is clear. I go and I've used them. I believe in, in, in shopping in-house and, and that, you know, I miss a lot of the stores that left. Well, one of the things I really wanted to, to, to focus with, because I know this is important to you, being a business person here in town, you're very concerned about Main Street and you're also concerned about the retailers and the businesses. Concerned about that, my commercial buildings, matter of fact, the town hall is curious, always asking me, where do I get my tenants? My commercial tenants? My commercial spots are not empty. And as far as I'm concerned, they ought to be glad and thankful that I have people in there that's um, meeting the needs of different um, cultures here in this in this town. They don't need to know where I got them from. The fact is, I got them and my buildings are not empty. So I'm doing my part to keep Main Street busy. Okay, well 